on the road on our Walmart to Walmart tours, we don't get much entertainment. But when we do, we're watching Trucker Josh. You should too. Flatbed Trucking, Sam Rides. Tell them all about it, Sam. Tell them, they're on your road. Tell them, tell them, Sam. Tell them how it is. There you go. They're on her road. Greetings, fellow citizens of the apocalypse. Are you still alive out there? It's getting crazy, isn't it? I'm filming this on Tuesday, March 17th. My videos are usually close to a week behind. Maybe you'll get this sooner, maybe you'll get it later. I don't know. I'm still alive. Trucking through the apocalypse. I'm healthy. My family's healthy. Uh, Britt stayed home from work today because she wasn't feeling well. But uh, it's not the symptoms of COVID-19. Uh, it's other symptoms to do with other things so it doesn't look like that's what it is it looks like it's probably something just to, uh, upset her stomach but we're all, all keep a close close eye on what's going on there uh, I'm doing okay still disinfecting my truck uh, at least once a day twice a day I, I would think first thing when I get up and uh, sometimes throughout the day and probably before I go to bed it's probably three times a day I'm going a little crazy trying not to panic They've closed the borders of Canada uh, to all non-citizens. The only people who are allowed into the country now are Canadian citizens, permanent residents, Americans, and uh, uh, like flight crews, diplomats, like you know, stuff like that. All Canadians abroad have been told to return home. It's, it's time to come home, and. Uh, so they're on their way home. They're on their way home now, or on their ways home. On their way home. However, they will be screened before boarding the plane, obviously. And if they are uh, symptomatic, and if they have symptoms of the virus, they will not be allowed to return to Canada, and they will have to seek treatment where they are. I believe that's what they're doing. I mean, these things change about every 10 to 30 minutes. So by the time you watch this, it's probably all completely changed because. A week is a long time. Uh, we're looking at about eight weeks, hopefully, for this whole thing to blow over. So that will bring us into it's two months. That will bring us into mid-May. And then we're probably going to be battling the tail end of it through the summer from the sounds of it. And the virus doesn't seem to be thriving as well near the equator. And I've heard that uh, it doesn't like sunlight much. It's not doing as well in Australia as it is up in the northern hemisphere where it's cold right now. But, uh, you know, they're still learning. They're still learning. By the time you watch this again, information may have changed and uh, it might have morphed into something else. Uh, we hear that there's been cases of people being reinfected with coronavirus, which means that it's been mutating and able to... Uh, our bodies build up an immunity to it and it mutates and it infect, infects the people again. Let's hope that's not the case. Let's hope that was just an, out, an outlier. But for now, as of today, it's still business as usual for me. I've gotten a few messages here on the satellite uh, for extra, you know, uh, security and health measures they're taking at the office. Uh, I'm not gonna. I'm not allowed in the office anymore. Uh, only like essential personnel in the office and office staff are allowed in the office. There's a little room where I can go in to talk to them, and we can talk through a window but they're advising that we have our if we need to meet with like the load gods and the, the people who help me out at the office there dispatchers and stuff that uh, we meet outside best ventilation is outside uh, hand sanitizer I'm still somewhat stocked I got half a half a thingy here can't find any more anywhere so I've ordered some off Amazon it says it's gonna take a month or three weeks to a month to get to me Let's hope it's not going to take that long. I've also ordered some, Attention. some face masks. Important message has arrived. Got another message. Oh, my new, okay, new registrations had trucks registered for the new, next year. That had nothing to do with the virus. Uh, you have 10 hours and 46 minutes of remaining drive time. Thank you. 
I'm currently in Canada. Well, obviously, because I'm going, I'm between Swan River and my next stop in Humboldt, Saskatchewan. I am already pretty much in self-isolation. Self I can't talk. I can't English today. I'm in, I'm pretty much self-quarantined and self-isolation. There's just me and Diesel in here. I meet literally less than five people a day and I keep my distance from them. Uh, wash my hands and face regularly, shower as often as I can get to a shower, you know, at least my regular shower amount, I, I will be okay, be okay. I'm um, listening to the news, unfortunately, I'm trying to get independent news as well off YouTube so that I can get other points of view so that I'm not just hearing the mainstream media because I don't trust them really, but uh, I don't want to just blow them off either. I mean, there are a lot of experts and professionals out there giving advice. So, uh, welcome to today's vlog. It's already been five and a half minutes of me talking about this, but I want to assure you that as of today, Tuesday the 17th, I'm still doing well. I've been doing live streams with you guys on the channel, so you've already seen me in the future, and you'll know if I get sick already. If, if I do, I'm going to share it with you guys as well so that you guys can also know what to expect. I'm a young and healthy guy. I don't smoke. i got healthy lungs. Uh, I would be fine. So... I'm not expecting to get sick, but if I do, I'll take you along for the journey and you can see what it's like, I guess? I'll let you know if I get sick. Uh, but uh, there's a good chance a lot of us might, might. But we've got to make sure that we take care of our elderly, our seniors, and our older family members. They're the ones that are most at risk. If you have pregnant friends or pregnant family members, they're very at risk. Uh, young children obviously, but mostly the elderly by the sounds of it. And the biggest threat we have is that we're gonna run out of hospital beds and run out of hospital equipment because for some reason, we're not gonna get into this too deep right now, but for some reason, we've become almost completely reliant on China for our medical supplies and our medicine. Who in the world thought that that would be a good idea? Pandemic comes around, we're gonna be in trouble. Okay, they're hogging all the stuff for their own people, and can you blame them? They're making it. May as well give it to their people first. That's what they're thinking. And then we're left high and dry without any medicine or topic for another time, but that's what we're dealing with right now. That's our biggest threat. So we wanna uh, contain the spread so that our hospitals don't become overwhelmed, so that if our older relatives do get sick, that the, the hospital beds are there for them, the ICU units are there for them, ventilators are there for them. I've been talking for too long already. I hope you guys are all healthy and safe. Let me know down below in the comment section if you know anybody who has been confirmed with COVID-19. I'd really like to hear uh, their story. Uh, if you feel like sharing it, if you don't feel like sharing it, I understand it's personal. But uh, let's get going with the rest of today, shall we? Trucking through the apocalypse. This is the strangest looking forklift I've ever seen in my life. It's like a 1950s tractor backwards. That turned into a forklift. So he's just unloading me here real quick. I got two pieces, two crates that are being left here. And then from here, from here we had to swift current. I believe we'll be there tomorrow morning. Well, we'll be there tonight, but we'll probably deliver tomorrow morning. No, wait, we gotta go to Saskatoon first. We'll do Saskatoon first, and then we'll go to swift current for tomorrow morning. And then we head into Alberta and BC. Rolling into Saskatoon here. There's one thing that's good about this whole thing going on right now, if you could call it that. There should be less traffic. So there's that. Small victories, right? So I gotta go around Saskatoon to the north side, close to the Flying J, up on Idlewild Drive. Drop off two crates there. They're waiting for me. Oh, this road is bad. Wow. Wow. I guess we got bigger things to worry about right now than this road, obviously. But, uh, yeah, we're going to drop these two crates off. Then we're going to go and grab some fuel, some DEF. I'm trying to keep my tanks full and topped off just in case if uh, things get really, really bad and I need to get home from wherever I am. Then I can just point the nose of my truck towards home and not stop till I get there. That's what it comes down to, but I just gotta make sure I always have enough fuel in my tanks for that. Or if I get, you know, stuck somewhere. 
if they shut everything down and shut down provincial travel and stuff, I may have to live in my truck for a while for a few weeks, right? And if they shut down a fuel production, well, I better make sure I have enough fuel in my tanks. You should be doing this anyways, even without a virus outbreak. This is what I usually do. But I might have to live in here for a few weeks, so we gotta make sure that we have enough fuel to keep ourselves warm. And uh, we can sort of get around. You know? Two kilometers. Take the entrance to the ride on. Circle drive west. I don't think it'll come to that, but you never know. I mean, as of right now, before I started rolling again, <clears throat> I checked the total cases in Canada. Now remember, this is old. By the time you're watching this, maybe it'll show you how fast it's spread or how fast it hasn't spread. Tuesday, March 17th, the total cases across all of Canada was 407 confirmed cases. So, uh, we'll see how many there are by the time you watch this. Maybe go Google it and leave it in the comments down below. Tell me what the, what the total is now. <coughs> Excuse me. Not the virus. I just ate some chocolate before and it makes my throat flummy. In one kilometer, take the entrance to the ride on. Circle drive west. Absolutely. It's a good idea. That's gonna take me to my customer. So far, people are still buying stuff. So far, I still got work to do. I haven't heard anything about anything shutting down, but if you think about it, we are where Italy was about two to three weeks ago right now. Now Italy, like today, Italy is at what? Was it 50,000 cases or third, something like that? So, I mean, we did get ahead of it and we. Meters, take the entrance to the ride on. Circle drive west. You never know. You know, people always tell you to prepare for these things and you're like, oh, no, no, it'll never happen. Well, it's 2020. We have, you know, modern medicine. And all of a sudden, boom, China's like, surprise! <phone rings> Novel Corona! Brand new, your body has no idea what it is. Not like the flu where your body may have experienced before and built up some antibodies, so if you come in contact with the germs, you won't necessarily get sick. You might be able to fight it off, fight off the germs, right? But with this new virus, if you come in contact with these germs, you're getting sick. That's just how it is. Too bad. Good luck, buddy. There's no cure. There's no vaccine. There's nothing. As of when I'm filming this, hopefully by the time you watch this, maybe there is some progress on that. But And if you are a senior citizen, you know, that can be pretty scary. Continue on this road for six kilometers. I think that's why everyone's freaking out because, you know, the common flu, we, we all sort of have antibodies built up, immune systems that are built up towards this because we've all been around it our whole lives. But this, this is something new. You get just a couple of these germs inside your body. You you got it. You got too bad. You got it. I hope your body can handle it. That's why we're being extra safe, right? We're cleaning down surfaces. We're reducing the germs around us. We're reducing contact with other people so that we don't have to worry about this. And hopefully they come up with a good vaccine, sort of like a flu shot, a corona shot that you can sort of take and uh, it'll be a vaccine that'll give you immunity. We'll see what happens. That's all that anyone's talking about today, so it's hard to veer off onto other topics because it's just, it doesn't matter what I listen to, where I go, who I'm talking to, it's all the same thing. It's all the same thing. Corona, 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 Corona. It's Corona time. That's all people are talking about. We're gonna really social distance, give ourselves some social distance from everybody, and pay more attention to hygiene. And hopefully I can find some more hand sanitizer soon. So we're rolling towards Swift Current right now. We're currently uh, on Highway 19, if you wanna call this a highway. Uh, it's more of like a collection of multiple different pieces of asphalt arranged in a nice straight, sort of straight line. It's a Saskatchewan highway. 
<laughs> so you gotta be vigilant here. I'm very glad I'm not driving down here at night because there are some massive potholes. There's not any right now, but man, I had to do some serious maneuvers there before to save my tires and rims. It's pretty crazy. It'd be a little harder to see them at night. Sort of like the Titanic rolling towards the iceberg, you know? You don't want to hit one of them. It'll sink the whole ship. Well, about two hours or so away from Swift Current. It's been a pretty good day so far. Definitely gonna have to take my truck in to uh, get the injectors looked at. And it's time to get a, a service. It's time to get an overhead adjustment. It's time to, you know, regular maintenance comes around. It's, it's that time. Uh, I don't know if you guys have tried Lucas injector cleaner in your engine before though. It, it's magical. It's magical what it does. It really works, and I'm not sponsored by them or anything. I just want to tell you, it really works. My truck was running a little rough. I was getting a little worried about it. It's a little rough. I know I got to get this truck into the shop like as soon as I get back, but it's still running okay, right? I put the injector cleaner in there, smooth as silk, just like brand new. It's just running beautifully. My fuel economy is up right away. You notice the difference right away. I've used it before, maybe like once every couple of months or so, or recently, I've, I think I've, I put one in last month and now this month as well. You notice the difference right away on that tank of fuel. Wonderful product, wonderful product. So, you know, I'm gonna be talking to Andy about that W900. Not any, like, I don't, I'm not in a big rush. I'm not going to come home with one tomorrow unless if he swings me a pretty sweet deal. But uh, it'll be, what, give me at least a year. I don't know, maybe soon. Maybe I'll surprise you. I don't know. Oh, it's all up to Andy, really. <laughs> and me. See if we can work something out. But, uh, you know, either you have these monthly payments, which are pretty big, or you have hmm, monthly maintenance, which is also pretty big. The thing with a new truck is you have warranty and you have peace of mind, and every mile on that truck is yours. Oh, there's one of those potholes. There, oh, oh, there's another one. Oh, another one. It, oh, oh, okay. We missed them. Wow. See, they come out of nowhere. Gotta watch out for those icebergs. Got a car coming up behind me now, too. Probably wondering, what's this guy doing? Dodging potholes, man. Oh, he's gonna nail these potholes off on the left. Uh oh. Oh, oh, your poor Sunfire. Just giving her. Just giving her in that poor little thing. Yeah, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. I'll keep you posted. I think this is my exit. We're going for it. Look at this guy over here on the right on that service road driving without his lights on. What a silly goose. It's nighttime, bud. Brake lights work at least. So we're in Swift Current. Uh, I got to deliver down the road here in the morning, but for now we're going to go to the Esso Husky here and try to find us a good quiet parking spot and edit us up a video because I haven't had any videos to release to you guys recently. We're probably going to do a live chat and uh, discuss more of this crazy virus stuff with you guys live. Hopefully I'll have a better signal here than I had last night, because last night I oh, had a terrible signal. It was just awful. But, uh, find us a parking spot, and I have 12 hours until I have to deliver in the morning. Lots of time. My truck is purring like a kitten. She really liked the little treat I gave her today. That was nice. This little injector cleaner. Really like that. Well, I just finished my live stream and I was told I am ruining the entire trucking industry. I had no idea I was so important. I had no idea I had that much power. Thank you. But I'm not really that important. Uh, I can't really do that. 
<laughs> uh, we got into talking about how crazy China is and uh, uh, what did I say? I don't even know what I said what got them mad, but uh, they can let me know in the comment section here if they want to. I didn't block you. It's, unless you continued later on. <laughs> yeah, the world is crazy right now, but uh, thankful for family, friends, thankful for health. Thankful for the world we live in, though it's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but you know, we gotta pray for the areas of the world that are struggling. So let me know down below in the comments section how the, the virus is doing right now when you're watching this video. If you're watching this a couple of years down the road, it's probably all gone by now, or we're all dead. Either way, leave me a comment down below. Let me know how the apocalypse went, and uh, I'll talk to you soon.